Hi and welcome again uh, to the last part of the fluid mechanics. Uh, here in this case we'll apply the Archimedes principle and uh, get some get some very important results actually. So what is what happens when uh, a body is in static equilibrium? We said that the buoyant force FB that acts in the opposite direction and uh, the, the gravity that pulls it down are both equal. So the body stays wherever it is, it doesn't move. Hence it is called as static equilibrium. So FB is equal to F uh, gravity, so there is nothing but mass of uh, this object times g. And you know that, so this gives you, I mean in this particular case, the body floats, so it floats whether it is at the surface or under the water, it floats and it stays in an equilibrium state of static equilibrium. So hence this is a condition for that, okay, the condition for a body to float is what it is. So and again, if the body is floating, you can find out the uh, you know the, the force at which the body is floating, or the or the buoyant force that is keeping the body afloat. So you can do that as well. So so this is about the floating, and uh, and what is I mean in case of static equilibrium, what if the body is uh, sinking? Well, sinking slowly or fastly, it is none of my, I'm not bothered, none of my concern, but uh, if the body is sinking, that means it's not in static equilibrium, in, you know, in one sense, because sinking to it with respect to me, an observer, a diver. So in that case, the buoyant force, Fb, will be equal to the weight of the, uh, you know, fluid displaced by the object or a stone or or something okay so this is a uh, these are the two very important uh, you know it's in one sense same but uh, however uh, you know you cannot uh, I mean take that for granted. So, both cases, the formula is the same, but again, the weight here is different from this. So, this is not the weight. I mean, of course, the formula is mg, but again, the weight depends on how much of water is displayed while the object sinks in the tank, so or in anywhere, for that matter. So, um, so this ends floating. One of the important aspects or applications of uh, Archimedes principle of uh, and of flotation. And, uh, so next we move on to the apparent weight. Uh, everybody knows when you get into a swimming pool you feel lighter and uh, of course it's very easy to pull a car in the swimming pool rather than in the in the air or in the atmosphere on or on the ground. And uh, it is because uh, the the apparent weight uh, comes into the play. That means the weight gets reduced because of this flotation principle. So, what will be the apparent weight? So, the formula to calculate the apparent weight. So, apparent weight, weight apparent is equal to the weight actual minus now, what will be the exact formula for this case? So, the apparent weight for you will be the actual weight, say about a hundred, uh, say one ton, a car is weighs one ton, minus how much will be the, what will be the contributing force in reducing the uh, weight of the car? Of course, buoyant force, isn't it? That means it's Fb. So, so 
So this is the equation, right? So the, the boring force, say, is about, um, well, um, let's put it in terms of uh, I mean, let's put weight uh, as well as force in terms of newtons for our um, you know, aid, uh, for the easiness of solving a problem. So, but then, uh, say the weight is about, uh, say, uh, 100 newtons, then the force, if it is about a buoyant force, is about uh, 30 newtons, then the apparent weight will be 70 instead of 100. So uh, that means that you will have to pu put much less effort to perform any work under the water rather than on the surface. So this is again uh, a very important uh, idea or, uh, or principle that comes under uh, that you experience in everyday life. And now, well, fluids flow all the time. Fluids flow, uh, but I mean, well, if it is in the swimming pool, of course it doesn't flow unless, you know, the wall is closed and so on. But, well, in general, in a pipe, the fluid always flows. And, uh, well, it flows in a very complex way. And we don't understand it completely, as I said in the previous lecture, in the beginning itself. So our understanding about the uh, about the real life fluids is limited. So what we do is we make an assumption that uh, you know the fluid for an ideal fluid, say, what are the things that you like, you know, you'd want to consider. So there are four prominent things, uh, you know, that you, you know, you that has been named or has been classified uh, for the ideal fluids. So uh, the ideal fluids. So the first one is uh, the steady flow. For an ideal fluid, the velocity or the speed with which the speed with which the uh, the the fluid flows is said to be constant for in a steady flow. That's the reason why it is named as a steady flow, isn't it? So um, it doesn't depend. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter if the edges of the fluid is uh, not steady, uh, but at the center of a fluid, uh, you know, the, the the speed will be steady or almost a constant. Hence, for an ideal fluid, the motion of the real fluids, uh, you know, as I said, is a Bit con is, is a bit complicated and we don't understand it, hence we have taken the ideal fluids. So for under ideal fluids for a steady flow, a property called as the steady flow uh, is the, the speed of the moving fluid doesn't change with time and either in magnitude or in direction. So the gentle flow of uh, water uh, in a say a small, um, well, you know, backwater or some some sort of uh, a canal or something, you know, a very smooth uh, irrigation canals, you know, the water flowing in that irrigation canal is kind of very steady and uh, smooth. So hence, that's the example that I can give. So the second is that the incompressible. So incompressible, for fluids at rest, the ideal fluids are not compressible. So you cannot take a tank of water and you, can com you cannot compress. Of course, liquids in the first place cannot be compressed, unlike glasses, unlike gases, okay? It's a very important fact. And uh, non-viscous, Viscous, viscosity and viscous nature is nothing but it is the re resistance to the flow. So fluids offer some resistance while uh, flowing to the direction, uh, the direction opposite direction of the flow, just like the resistance. So it's also again the resistance to the flow. So just like the resistance in the conductor, it's the same way. 
So here, the ideal fluids are non-viscous in nature. That means that they keep flowing all the time. So uh, one of the uh, science physicists, L Lord uh, Rayleigh, had said that it is impossible to fit or work, make work a uh, you know a propeller of a ship in an ideal fluid, a ship for a ship traveling in an ideal fluid. Because the, the important thing here to be considered is that the fluid is always moving. If it is non-viscous, then why do you need the propeller? And does it matter if the propeller works or not? Well, it doesn't matter. Hence, really, uh, you know, it's, it's a very humorous, uh, you know, well, a sentence that was made by Lord really way back. So that means that the, if, um, thanks to the non-viscous nature of the ideal fluids. It always keeps flowing. However, the real fluid, again, as I said, quite, quite complicated. It's not so. So, that, but again, in this case, uh, if you take honey and uh, compare it with uh, water, well, honey is more viscous. Uh, hence, it doesn't flow easy. And uh, water, of course, compared to honey, it flows very easily. So, uh, it's a very uh, important. Uh, in an everyday example that you always you know, tend to see so uh, or observe. So the next one is uh, the irrational flow. So the irrational flow, well, if you are in rapids, so what happens to you? You get thrown all over the place in the boat or whatever the canoe or you're traveling in. Um, so, um, so irrational flow makes, uh, you know, the, the ideal fluids uh, flowing irrationally uh, will tend to, uh, you know, make, you know, just pour some uh, ink just like I did, you know, in the first, you pour an ink into the, uh, you know, a stream and uh, you'll see how, uh, you know, the the wriggles and the jiggles that are going on in the, I mean, while the water or the fluid flows. So, um, well, so that's uh, the four, um, you know, properties, if you may call, or uh, assumptions that we have made for a ideal fluid. So, this uh, sums it up all, and um, well, of course, we have two more important principle or uh, you know derive I mean I'm not deriving it. However uh, we have two more important things to discuss and uh, that is all we have in the fluid dynamics and the mechanics. So next equation of uh, continuity Uh, the equation of continuity okay. Okay. Um, So now what you have to do is you have to consider a fluid flowing through this type of tube and uh, consider the cross-sectional area here and uh, the pressure P1 with which it enters and uh, V1 is the speed with which it enters here and the V2 is what it is this is the area of cross-section and both the ends I think that's all we need so V1 and V2 Right. Now, so this is the a tube or whatever you may call, and this is the, the fluid is actually flowing through this tube in this direction from upper level to sorry from lower to upper. And say that it's being provided powered by a motor, otherwise it would be wrong. Remember always, uh, you know, things like 
charge or, uh, or pressure tend to change or flow from higher level to lower level. <coughs> okay, not the, the opposite unless, again, you have, a, as I said, I have a motor here, uh, you know, that's very imaginary and uh, it's powering the fluid. However, now, this is the area of cross section for this is A1 and this is A2. And uh, the speed with which the water enters here or the fluid enters here is V1 and uh, it exits uh, relatively less speed because of the increase in the area uh, at V2. And how did I know? Well, it's a real life experience. So then let's write something for, you know, something that makes sense. So according to the equation of continuity, it says, I mean, it's nothing but the relationship between the speeds at which the fluids enter to its area of the cross section to the speed with which it leaves the tube or you know, at a certain point with, uh, to the area of cross section. So it takes time t again to flow from here to there. Okay? So again, not necessarily important, however, it does take some time from here to, to reach from here to there. And the pressure is, P, P1 is the initial pressure with which the water is pumped in. Okay, so now the equation says A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. So the equation is relating the area, cross sectional area of the tube to the speeds of the say the speed of the speed of the fluid that is flowing in the tube. Okay? Well yeah. Fine. So now the important thing that you need to remember here is that this is an ideal fluid. Okay? If it's not an ideal fluid, forget about applying this formula. Why? Because well the viscous at the end. However, you can use this formula again to to get one more rv is nothing but the rate of change of volume so i take a point uh, here and at that particular point uh, that is the point at that particular point what's the rate of change of volume with respect to t so um well that is given by the formula a V and this is as you know it's a constant right A V is a constant so the volume flow rate of fluid there is nothing but R V the V past going past uh, you know a particular point uh, in certain time T so Again, the area will be constant and the speed of the water again is constant. So same way, you, cal you calculate the mass. So Rm is equal to Av and uh, well, but here again, the density of the uh, what fluid comes into the play. So Av, rho Av and again this is a constant. So Rm is, well, the mass again same point, so amount of fluid uh, that is flowing through a particular point at a given instant of time, it's just like finding the instantaneous velocity, but in this case you're finding out the instantaneous mass in one sense, and that is nothing but uh, the Rm, that is nothing but rho Av, uh, you know, uh, again it's a, it's a constant. So, so again, this is uh, applicable only for the ideal fluids. Uh, if you apply to the real fluids, as I said, it's quite complicated. We wouldn't get a particular answer. Okay, and uh, well, the answer we get will be off by a million miles from the correct answer or the correct description of what exactly is going on. So, well, you know, again, it's um, to calculate the what exactly is going on, you need a lot of uh, advanced mathematics and advanced understanding of how the fluid floats uh, in the in the tubes. Okay, So the next is the Bernoulli's equation. So 
So Bernoulli's equation is applicable only if you are considering conservative forces. And, um, well, we shall take the same example here again. Uh, body uh, example. Stream or a fluid that's flowing. And this is the area cross section. This is A1. And the time taken to reach from here is T. And uh, the speed is V2. And uh, here the speed is V1. And so on. So the body flows from here in this particular direction to here, okay, and it exits. So, and again, the body enters here with pressure P1. So the Bernoulli's equation is as such as this. So P1 plus half, I mean it's like calculating the initial moment and the final moment of equating both. Since, as I said, applying the me conservation of mechanical energy to this system, the con mechanical energy is conserved in the system, hence uh, the equation uh, is P1 plus half of well, rho half rho V squared plus rho G H is what it is, is equal to zero. Right? Okay, the equation will be Initial is going to look, uh, you know, finals of P2 plus half rho E1 rho E2 squared plus rho G. Right? So the equation is, is as such. So the initial, and you know, if you subtract both, you get zero. <coughs> and uh, P1 plus half rho V squared plus rho G H. It's nothing but the kinetic and the potential energy. Uh, you know, it's the same equation that you have got that is the E mechanical is equal to zero. Because it's conserved. Mechanical energy is conserved. So the difference between these two equations is zero. So just taking it as a whole and here half rho V1 squared is the kinetic energy density of uh, in this particular diagram chart, any at cer a certain particular point, the or you know from here till here, from A to B, so half rho v1 squared or you know, in this point v1, where in this point the kinetic energy density or uh, the kinetic energy with which the particles are flowing is what is half rho. As I said, K and plus the potential energy is what has, has already been given. So, no, P plus half rho V squared plus no, Apply the conservation loss and uh, it says P plus half rho V squared plus rho G H is equal to a constant. Okay, so P1 is what, right, here, the pressure with which the fluid enters. So, if the speed of the flu uh, fluid's element increase as the element travels along the horizontal stretch line, the the pressure of the fluid must decrease. That is what is evident from this particular equation. And if the viscous forces, you know, just in case, are present, that means that there are thermal energies, as I said, uh, which will not be taken into the account in the equation. And hence, uh, again, the Bernoulli's equation is far from correct. Of course, it's somewhere close to the correct, but it is far from correct. So, uh, well, so if the speed of the fluid elements increase as the elements travel along the horizontal stretch, the pressure of the fluid must decrease conversely. So, it's very important that you remember this from the Bernoulli's and uh, 
but you apply the equations you can get uh, you know the values and the row will be given to you when you do you, you just have to find out the speed and uh, the height of, you know, the time so well it's not even relevant in the equation anyway but however this sums up our uh, fluid mechanics chapter and uh, and yeah uh, also uh, it sums up almost we are at the edge of uh, concluding and saying goodbye to Newton. However, the problem is uh, even in this we have used a lot of um, you know formulas or the, the free body diagrams from the Newtonian mechanics and, uh, and in the next coming lecture we will uh, discuss about the sound. Uh, so how things sound exactly in the nature is what we will be discussing. Goodbye from me now.